related to the system applications, right? Uh, so CDOs have to look at holistically how can I solve the problem across infra data and sensor consumption, right? And it's not easy. Okay, cool. So connected systems, right? Uh, I'm not sure if you have heard about connected systems or connected intelligence as such, but uh, let me deep dive a little bit for some engineering experts. Uh, ignore this slide because I'm sure you would have heard about this journey. But for budding uh, engineers in the uh, in the back seat, I would want to take you through the memory lane, right? So 1980s was when you know a big bang of data warehouses and all of that happened, right? And we all know how data warehouses are very much important for us. Basically, end of the day, warehouses where you structure the data and put it in a place where I can read and do and get the whole process to fast, right? And then around 2000 is when a concept of data came in, saying that hey, I don't know what I want to do with the data. Can we just dump it into a single place, right? And it fits with me, right? <laughs> right? Because at, at instance in, in data warehousing, terminologies you connected the end user with the source. But in data lake, you cut it off. You said, okay, fine, I just load it into data lake. Now the view of the end users was cut off. So that created huge problems. Right? So you eventually had to get into a warehouse after the data lake. Right? So that was the trend that happened around 2000, 2010 so is when cloud like boom happened and like modern data warehouses came into the Right, we have a lot of different uh, options. You have a lot of like data grids, you have a red shift, augmented data block storage, and so on and so forth. So, the <laughs> concept of uh, cloud itself moved, and we were like happy with that, right? Uh, but eventually, we realized that okay, I cannot just put it into an S3, I will also have to have like a snowflake or a red shift along with it, maybe an aggregated curtail kind of data set for me to make any kind of system, right? Then the concept you now that is kind of trending still is Lakehouse. Not sure how much of you have heard about it, but it's an interesting topic. But again, first question you should ask is, we just said that Lakehouse fits, or data lake fits, right? What is different in Lakehouse? So basically, Lakehouse is creating that relational layer on top of a link, and it gets combined. And uh, uh, you, you should check out data link as a concept, right? Uh, that, that's been a good game changer. So there's a lot of people like, ardent followers like, okay, I'm going to use only a Lakehouse going forward, right? I'll not have anything else, right? Uh, <coughs> Almost around two years ago is when people started talking about the data mesh. How many of you have heard about data mesh? Yeah, yeah, interesting topic. Right? Do you think it, it is successful? Yes, no? In my mind, it is not. It is very difficult, right? Okay, let me just explain what this data mesh as such. Basically, you are moving centralized systems to decentralized systems. And I am a very, very uh, Ardent follower of decentralization. We have tried a lot of stuff in our organization. One specific example, which is non tech, we wanted to decentralize our talent hiring itself. Right? Uh, we thought, fine, sure, uh, decentralize all of the talent, we will decentralize all of our hiring as a process. But again, we might not uh, cater to any specific account of needs, so why don't we just decentralize it? It fails. <laughs> right? Uh, so, if you look at large organizations, they have invested so much of time centralizing their data sets in terms of a warehouse or a link. And now if you go and tell them that, no, boss, you are going to create your own data sets, you are going to create your own uh, domain products, and you are going to own it and you are going to publish it to others. It's very tough. It's a cultural problem rather than a technology problem. Right? So data mesh is going to fail in a cultural uh, setup for a large opportunity kind of uh, you know, engagement. So you have a very specific choosy in terms of where you would want to implement a mesh as such, right? A small company, maybe it's easy because you're starting off small, but it's an overview, right? But a large organization, you've already invested so much, you will not find that business value at all, okay? So what's the solution, right? So <clears throat> at least given the last four years of experience working with multiple retail and healthcare giants, we have come to realize that this combination of uh, uh, centralized and decentralized method that we Uh, there are certain you know, examples that I am going to take, but end of the day what I am looking at is uh, from an infrastructure as well as a data perspective. Largely it has to be centralized. From an application, from an insights perspective, it can still be decentralized. Right? And we will get into what I mean. Okay. So if you look at this, right, so I am talking about infra, data, insights, consume and manage as an entire app stack. 
And I'm saying app is because you can look at it as a product, a data product or whatnot. But end of the day, business users want to touch and feel and not just look at things. Right? They want to share reports, they want to converse with the data, either through like a chatbot, either through like a, a what do you say, a, a report that I can send it to my colleagues, either through like interactive dashboards, whatnot. But they want that visually appealing kind of systems. Right? Uh, over here, managers actually manage business process and not the stack. Right? So, ideally, the entire stack will actually lead to managing a specific business problem and a specific stack. And that's why it is siloed. Right? Every business person or business domain creates these siloed apps, which is not interconnected. Right? Uh, <coughs> so, what we are trying to solve here is as you move along the maturity line, ideally, if you want to drive a lot of value across your data assets and apps, it should basically lay a foundation of data and infra which is more centralized, which is more controlled, which you yourself build. And then give capabilities on the app stack for businesses to build it themselves. Right? It doesn't mean they will build it from scratch, but can I provide a self-serve capabilities for them to like easily build an application? And no code, low code platform has like really changed the game. Right? Now people are looking at not really creating just drag and drop and create an app that is in production, like in finance, right? So that is the world which we are tending towards and business demands more power, more fast kind of uh, application development, data product development, so on and so forth in the future, right? So how do we do this? Uh, end of the day, we are looking at a deep interconnected system at an app layer, right? Uh, which each different domains own, they own their own app assets, Right? But the data assets and the infrastructure assets is owned by the central IT. Again, this is just a uh, suggestion of sorts. I would say it is not that every organization has to do it this way. But this is what we have seen uh, pan out in the last three, four years, right? Which gives us the best bang for buck for whenever we are going and selling, or even organizations whenever they are implementing, because fighting that battle of sets, data assets with the business team is humongous, right? Okay, so how do we do this? I'm not going to spend too much time over here, but this gives you a view of a revenue growth uh, ecosystem, right? If you can see at the top, there are different business processes that I would need to make a difference, right? One example is, like, let's say I need to do my account planning, price promo planning for, uh, you know, what categories of brand that I want to sell, right? Similarly, I would want to use, uh, you know, Optimization, or I might want to use a pricing strategy as two different inside layers, right? These two don't talk to each other. They want to use the same data. Probably, hopefully, if your data teams are good, right? But then if there is a change in some sort of formula, you know, your whole uh, analysis goes for a toss. Can I make sure that I give you the capability for your apps to talk to each other? I know there is an app that is built in which uses an algorithm which displays a KPI. There's another app, my other business unit uses. Can I mismatch it? Can I drag and drop it? Right? Some product provided these capabilities, but I'm more referring to how you build your data and infrastructure layer so that you can enable this through augmented you know, platforms. Okay? Perfect. So, largely, I, I, I just want to talk about what different teams are created here. Right? Uh, we largely went four different teams. There is a specific governance team because governance needs to be managed separately. Right? You cannot let different teams do different things. So it has to be managed separately. There is an ops team who actually basically productionizes whatever the company team decides. Right? This is majorly your DevOps and DevSecOps kind of uh, uh, teams who will actually productionize these systems. Right? Centrally, you have your data central team, which creates data products and defines data contracts. Again, data contracts is nothing but a contract between a data producer and an end user so that they know how to use that data. So your governance is taken care of there from our data, uh, you know, harmonization is right? And the consumption team on the right hand side gets a lot more power to A, create insights and create apps, right? No longer they should be dependent on creating applications like a React application or a bar where the code sending. Can I do it by myself? Can I drag and drop and create an app that is production company? Can I do it in, like, let's say, you region today, can I, like, migrate it into a US region? Yes, that's what the customer does, right? Uh, okay, cool. So 
let's look a little bit about market dynamics as such. It's not that people have not tried to do this, right? There are enough players in the market who are actually doing some sort of it. And again, in that stack, it is very difficult for you to provide complete sales of capabilities across the stack with everyone, right? So there are certain platforms, let's say like, you know, data IP provides a good enough, uh, you know, uh, functionality for you to like, you know, draw insights as a service, right? And your data infrastructure is like a kind of, that can probably sit on top of it, in warehouse or whatnot, right? There are certain, you know, custom uh, applications as well. Uh, but again, across the cloud stack, you can see that they are also trying to get there, right? They are also trying to give you more flexibility for you to build it yourself. It's not a new thing, but the complexity is can I integrate it? Or are you still doing siloed kind of development even with these capabilities, right? You can go either way. So you need a really good expertise in strategy and uh, data architecture when you actually design this, right? So that I can provide you more flexibility in terms of integrating systems and uh, platform capabilities for the next step. Right? Awesome. So, way forward, right? What do we look at uh, going forward? Couple of interesting things, right? It is not really only a technology challenge as such when we look at it. Right? It is always a technology and a cultural challenge, right? Never is it that hey, uh, there are like not, not good enough experts for to build a tool or build an application. It's generally more cultural, it's generally more ownership driven problems. So two bits, right? For experts or budding experts that you need to look at, you have to be business focused. I have seen a lot of people like worry about hey, uh, what is the best tech stack that I need to learn, should I be a high tech developer, should I be a data IT developer, so on and so forth. Often they forget that we are uh, being paid for the business as such, right? So that means I need to be constantly thinking about how the business is going to be used, what the business demands, and if they demand it. Uh, so one of the days when you actually look at uh, you know, just engineering as, as a similar market, you have to look at full stack. And for me, full stack is not really your best in everything, right? For any solution, there will be like four or five different stacks that you need to look at, right? Uh, including uh, uh, engineering, software engineering basics, right? So we at Map Company are like very strong opponents of full stack, and we started this like trend almost three years ago, where all of our data scientists had to be trained on data engineering concepts because we believe that they are the best way to converse with the business and solve business problems for them, right? Uh, the other aspect that I definitely want to like uh, convey to uh, our budding engineers is that agility is the only way to go. You cannot wait for 20 years for you to be architect. You cannot do the same mistakes as what I did, right? So talk to each other, talk to uh, team members, figure out what issues they have gone through, what their journey is, uh, and then see what, what best we can do. Uh, the third bit, uh, from an organization perspective, what can I do, what, what, what do organizations do in such a scenario is definitely go towards more self-serve capabilities, right? Uh, you have to build your assets and you have to build your platforms in such a way that you provide capability for the business to do it themselves, but still govern it centrally, right? Uh, if you just need to decide which self-serve capability do I provide, how much of push and play I need to like so that it is balanced, right? You cannot let people build uh, anything that they want. You still need to control, but you still need to give that flexibility for the system. Right? Uh, the other thing that we have noticed is culture was a huge problem, right? Especially in the traditional mindset of, hey, uh, I own this engineering practice that I am building out a lot of reports. Should I give away that flexibility to a different team or the right? So that, that culture shift is a big challenge that we work with, especially with organizations. Right, there's a lot of common answers that we need to do. Uh, that's the second part. Third part is governance. I know people talk a lot about governance, right? It's a little jittery when they start with governance. Because <laughs> governance is a huge field, right? Uh, and it requires a lot of deep dive for you to get into. Uh, but end of the day, you have to govern the entire stack, and it's not just one governance that you can like end with. Uh, you have to do your cloud systems. Accordingly, you have to do your data systems accordingly. You even have to do your app systems accordingly. Right? Um, so, in the entire stack is 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 where it right? Um, so, I will take a pause here. Any questions? Uh, I can deep dive into some specific.